Did you know nearly one in five adults in Barbados have diabetes? Did you know diabetes is one of the leading causes of vision loss in the world? Regular eye screening can save your eyes. Contact the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program today at 243-3937 to find out how you get your simple digital eye screening done. The Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program. Saving eyes, saving lives. It is 9 o'clock, and right now on VOB 92.9 FM, the only sugar-free minutes you will hear on your radio are about to start because they are being brought to you with the compliments of the Barbados Diabetic Ice Screening Program in partnership with the Barbados Community Foundation and the Maria Holder Diabetes Center. Good morning to Larry, and good morning to everyone who's tuned into VOB right now. Welcome to the only show that is especially designed for diabetics and and pre-diabetics that you hear on this station every Saturday morning. This is Peter Boyce here. So what are we doing on the show today? Enough things. Today, you'll be hearing a little bit about vascular issues. And you know how we Bajans like to eat. Because you know we like we belly bad. And you might be a diabetic and you might be wondering how much times a day a diabetic should be eating. Well, stay tuned. We have the answer for you in this show. But before we get to that. When is the last time we hear from Tony, the podiatrist? Because we have not heard from her for a long time. And you know how important your feet is when you are a diabetic. That is where Tony Pickering, podiatrist of the Maria Hola Diabetes Center, comes in. You might be a diabetic and you might be wondering exactly what has happened the first time you go to a podiatrist. Well, Tony will answer that question for you. Tony Pickering, podiatrist of the Maria Hola Diabetes Center. This is she. When a person first visits the podiatrist, we would usually take a history of the patient. So we we'll try to find out what's going on with you, what medication you're on, and it's important bring the medication because we like to know these things. And it's because the problem that you might be having might be related to medication you may or may not be using, but it's just always good to bring the medication. We would do an assessment of that. General assessment of the feet would look at nail and skin care, and that means cutting your nails, making sure that any callus on the skin is taken care of while you move. You look clothing and taking out any corns that you have on your skin, giving you foot care advice. It also involves any discussion with respect to any claims that you make, any ailments that might be bothering you, so circulation. We would do an assessment then of your circulation, and that's particularly with respect to your arteries and how the blood is flowing into your arteries. We also do something called a monofilament test, which is when we take something like a small, it looks like a needle, but it's not a needle. It's a small, thin piece of plastic, and what we do is check the bottom of the feet, and the top of the feet as well, in certain areas, to see if there is loss of sensation when we touch. And we also look to see if there are other nerve damage as well with other tests that we do. So we do like a general neurological exam, circulation test, general care of the foot, as I said, skin and nails, if something needs to be done, advice with respect to how to care for the foot, footwear advice as well. And depending on that diabetic assessment that we've done, that determines then how often the patient comes back. So yes, what we do determines that, but we also have to consider the age of the person who is at home with the person, if there's anybody to assist with the care of the feet. We also have to consider if the patient is capable of doing these things themselves. So what I mean by that is, can they get down to their feet? A lot of girls complain of the knees or complain of the hips. They can't bend, they can't get to their feet to check them properly. So it's important to take into all of these things, take in all of these factors, I should say, and, and use this as a determining tool to see how often we see that in person. If the person is quite good, can manage on their own, everything is going okay, they don't have any complaints applications with respect to managing meals, callus, any circulation incompetency, anything like that, we usually review with them annually and that would really just be to do a diabetic screen, which is what we did initially. Some patients aren't comfortable with that. I usually advise them to come in every six months. But the the key note with all of this is that just because I say you come every six months, just because I say you come every three months, doesn't mean that if you left my office today and something happened over the weekend, you can't come back in next week. I find people sometimes will tell me, oh, the, the appointment was coming up soon, so I just decided to wait. That doesn't make any sense because that waiting time, all that's going to do is create a problem, right? So that is really what, sorry, Peter, I was talking a lot, but that, that's really what <laughs> is in a diabetic visit to a podiatrist. That would really be the first visit. After that, things get a bit more fluid, you know, 
you would do maintenance and management of callus and skin and nails if you need to. And then sometimes patients come in with nothing like that to do, but they might have a problem, uh, they might have a muscle injury, they might have an ingrowing toenail. So all of these things are usually dealt with at the initial presentation and so we decide what the best plan is to go forward with respect to managing that, that patient. Hey, Alfonso, that's you in the fridge again. You eating again? How much times for the day you eating now? Excuse me, did I not work and bring the money into this house? And with said money, did I not purchase the same food that you don't have the audacity to armpit your teeth and ask me about? Who's you to come in here and, and, and kind of be talking about eating how much of this house, woman? Where's the man of this house? Man, you got to remember, you got diabetes. And you gotta be real careful with your eating habits. So who did and met you an eating expert that you could be talking about how much times a diabetic should eat? You know, you're right. You're right, man. I am not an expert. So you know what I will do? I will make a call. I want you to call your mother. Go to her ready, she can't tell me nothing. Hello, the Maria Horta Diabetes Center. I have a question for nutritionist Victoria Cox. How many times a day should a diabetic person eat? How often should a person living with diabetes eat in a day? This is going to vary from person to person in terms of how often someone living with diabetes should be eating. Um, it really depends on, you know, what blood sugars are looking like and, and what someone's medication or insulin regimen is. However, as a very general basic rule of thumb, you know, I tend to um, mostly suggest eating at least three meals a day, so a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, about five to six hours apart, and a between meal snack if needed to keep blood sugars nice and steady. As we continue on the Maria Hola Diabetes Radio Show, Bar members, the Barbados Diabetic Foundation invites you to get your eyes screened at the Barb office at Murphy House Hastings Christ Church every Wednesday this month from next week Wednesday the 5th of October from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Barb special price of only $80. Call 243-3937 to book your screening appointment now. These screenings will be performed by the Maria Hola Diabetes Center Health Professionals so BARP members be at the BARP office next Wednesday from 10 a.m. to get your ice cream for diabetic retinopathy. Remember you can also get your ice cream from Monday to Friday at the Diabetes Center and the brand new state-of-the-art OCT ice screening machine which was gifted to the foundation is now in operation so you can go and take advantage of it. Let's hear from Dr. Charles Pierce on how this new equipment works. So we know have an OCT machine, which stands for Optical Coherence Tomography, and essentially what it does, it creates a 3D image of the retina, which is the back of the eye, and it allows us to see any advanced changes that are happening as a result of diabetic eye disease. The previous equipment is a retinal camera. It allows us to see if there is any early signs of disease affecting the back of the eye. The new equipment we have is quite similar to an ultrasound machine in that we're able to get more details about what is happening in the retina. So diabetes affects all the blood vessels in the body and specifically in the eye it can cause leakage from the very small blood vessels in the eye. And this leakage collects in the center of the eye, the retina macula, which is responsible for fine detail and can cause significant reduction in your in your vision. What the OCT machine does is it allows us to see how much fluid is leaking from these blood vessels. And then we can decide whether we need to treat or whether we need to monitor more closely. Thank you, Dr. Pierce. Remember, the number to call is 243-3937 to get your eyes screened, diabetics and pre-diabetics. And now it's time for our eye sound for today. And I know I've got a lot of VOB people out there saying, Well, how come I don't hear you playing the oldie goldies anymore? I like my oldie goldies, you know. That's why I like Larry. So for all you oldie goldie lovers out there, we take you back to 1965. The artist is Gene Pitney. And this is the song, Looking Through the Eyes of Love, compliments the Maria Holder Diabetes Center. In the eyes of the world, I'm a loser just wasting my time I can't make a dime In the 
the eyes of the world Being born was my first big mistake I can't get a break But in the eyes of my woman I stand like a hero, a giant A man who's as tall as can be Contact the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program today at 243-EYES, 243-3937. To find out how you get your simple digital eye screening done, the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program. In the eyes of the crowd, I'm another Ojo on the street. We now go to a lady who has experienced the Barbados Ice Screening Program. Well, I found the service is very good and I would advise anyone who is a diabetic, give it a try because it definitely do work. Once you follow the plan and you follow your what you're supposed to do, yes, it can improve your eyesight and yes, it do work. It can work for you. It is very, extremely helpful because as I said, when they first went into the plan, yes, they saw your doctor, but they didn't only just stop there on concentrating on the eyes. I had a nutritionist that taught the right way to eat uh, as a physical therapist I also was taught um, as I said the right way to eat the portions that you do put on your plate is very important and there was a chart that was given for me to follow they just didn't tell me they also gave me documentation I had pamphlet everything that I cannot follow so I wouldn't get off track or go after it and do my own thing Yet another state-of-the-art service which is available at the Diabetes Center is vascular screening. So if you have bad circulation, if you find you got extreme leg pain, you might need this vascular or ABI screening test. Let's listen to what spokesman Donald Clark has to say about this vascular checkup and why maybe you should get it. Once you have reached 50, you need to go and get that check done. It's peripheral artery disease. It's a simple test. It's called an ABI test, and what they're in, um, what they're looking for is to see the blood flow in in your lower extremities. And I can't stress enough the importance of getting this test the test test done. I'm glad to know that the Maria Holder Foundation is offering this. You know, individuals need to go and get that test done. The Maria Holder Diabetes Center, located in Warren St. Michael, with their diabetic eye screening program, offers a standard of service that equals or surpasses any you might receive internationally. So if you are a diabetic or pre-diabetic and listening to your radio right now, you need to make an appointment and get your eyes screen by calling 243 243- 3937 to make that appointment. In addition, there's now a new vascular service that is the centerpiece of a national campaign that will highlight the discovery of early circulatory problems in the limbs and extremities of at-risk persons. So if you are having vascular or circulation problems, call and make an appointment at 417-0305 or 243-3937. The last 15 minutes you heard on your radio was brought to you of the condiments of the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program in partnership with the Barbados Community Foundation and the Maria Holder Diabetes Center. Until next time, take care of your eyes. Did you know nearly one in five adults in Barbados have diabetes? Did you know diabetes is one of the leading causes of vision loss in the world? Regular eye screening can save your eyes. Contact the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program today at 243-3937.
to find out how you get your simple digital eye screening done. The Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program. Saving eyes, saving lives.